Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Let's go ahead and make sure you all can hear me. If you'd please type the number one in the chat box in that comment section, let me know that you can. I would greatly appreciate it. Nothing worse than talking to myself for the next little bit and no one answering. All right. All right. So I'm just trying to get everything going here. Perfect. Decent attendance today, lighter than usual, but overall decent attendance. Um, why is this showing no camera? Let's try that. All right. You guys see my camera at this point? This pretty face on the camera? No. All right, I think I've got to shut my recording software down. I think they're competing for the camera. Let's try it again. Oh, there it is. All right. <laughs> uh, thanks, I appreciate it. All right, thanks, Jim. Erica, hello, hello, hello. Thanks, Paul. Stephanie, I can hear, I can hear. All right, there. Good, 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 good. Welcome, everybody, back from a long three-day weekend. For my wife and daughter, it's like a nine-day weekend because they've got their winter recess at the schools that they work in. So they're off this entire week. It does make it hard for me to be in here um, this week and not hanging out with one of them or both at the same time doing something. Um, my wife and daughter have made some plans ready to do some things together because they're both off, right? But for me, it's a little tougher with market and, and you guys and all of that. So, and today we added on power hour, which we normally don't do on a Tuesday. Like I said, if we can get decent numbers in here, we'll continue to do this on a Tuesday um, if we have Monday holidays like we did. So, excellent. All right. So, keep in mind that everything we look at is for educational purposes. Nothing's meant to be advice or recommendations. And if you like what you see here, guys, we've got a ton of other content out there. Right, so coming up this uh, comes to calendar, February 22nd, manana, tomorrow. Coming up tomorrow, we have Monster Market Movers trading you. Well, Mastermind is tonight. I'm teaching that as well. Uh, trading news on the 27th, mastering the trade. That is for everybody that is in power option plays, and you all should be. If you're not up $260,000 this year, you probably need to be in, my, in power option plays. Right, just an idea, just a thought you might want to consider, right? <laughs> Uh, Trade Watch Alerts Q&A. Trade Watch Alerts Q&A. That's Amelia has her class on the second. Vega Mastery. If you guys have not seen this before, uh, Sean Reed, brand new coach here with Wealth Builders. Sean is knocking it out of the park with the trade setups that he's doing there. I'm super impressed with him as a coach and a, a trader, right? He's done a great job. So uh, Power Hour, Trading Coaches Playbook on their regular schedule. And da da da, -da Feb 22, which is mañana, tomorrow. 8 p.m. tomorrow night, we have a live Crushing It With Volatility, which is Sean's last free training that he's doing on how he takes advantage of vols, of volatility, without, without utilizing things like theta. He focuses on vega. Vega starts with V. V stands for volatility. He's going to show you exactly how he does that. Right? Power option plays, covered call, e-mini, all on their regular schedule from there. Right here's our followers page. Make sure you are following along. Make sure you're checking out Trading Like a Boss and other websites, folks, that we're going to be giving you, right? Not just subscribe to the ones that are here, meaning YouTube and or Wealth Builders, uh, but Trading Like a Boss has nothing but free content on it. That's all it is. Everything that's on here is free content, including, including Crushing It With Volatility, right? Power Hour, Trading Coaches Playbook, a great place to go ahead and register for either of those classes. Becoming a Pattern Whisperer, 30 days, right? Blah, 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 right? And, you know, a little bit about us in there, about me, uh, and so forth. Right, a couple of FAQs in there. So, but all of our free trainings, you can go right back to Wealth Builders from this link. Very shortly, you are going to see another link on there, and that link is going to be to robertjroy.com. This link is going, this website is going to be a little bit more about me, about personal, maybe some family stuff, some things that I'm doing, some uh, trials and tribulations, struggles that I go through in the market and the pains that I tend to deal with at times as every other trader does. And it says they don't lies. Everybody goes through issues with trading, right? Nobody does it where it's a home run over and over again, 
right? So, um, and this is brand new. We are not done yet. Phase one is done. So Wealth Builder Swag, this is going to take you over to our uh, store that's got some of, and again, it's not all done yet, right? But it's got some of the hats and some of the shirts that we've got in there, right? So, you know, trading like a boss. I'm a big fan of black t-shirts. White just doesn't do well for me, okay? Uh, but I love the trading like a boss. I love the white top hat in there, right? You know, for a trading boss uh, and so forth, right? And then a little bit about some of the components of the tools we have, some of the free stuff we've got here. Stock Market Millionaire, you're going to be able to see uh, probably the last five or 10 of our videos up there. Our, our podcasts will be up there. You can also get them on one of your favorite links here. Uh, if someone wants to interview me or hire me. And then some of our YouTube stuff down here. And we're also going to look to put some of our other um social media platforms on here so that you'll be able to see what's on Facebook and Twitter and so forth right from here. There'll be links on this going back to Trading Like a Boss. There'll be links on here going back to wealthbuildershq.com. We're going to have a blog on here, which is where we'll do some of the personal stuff for me that I'll start off with probably once a month there. Um, but you know, you guys can bookmark that site uh, because it's only going up from there. Oh, meaning more stuff going on, more activity on it uh, at that point. All right, beautiful. Uh, Erica said, how do you register on Trading Like a Boss? There is no registration, Erica. You should just go right into it, tradinglikeaboss.com, and you're on the website. At that point, any one of the tools that you want, there's a registration to get Power Hour. And for questioning the volatility and Trading Coaches Playbook, it's all right there. You just fill it all in, all right? So this is by tool. You're registering for whatever tool you want to get access to. And all it does is, you know, take you over to where it goes. Okay. Uh, so I hope that helps. All right. Excellent. So let me bring us back into, uh, let me get rid of this. I don't need that open any longer. Let's bring you back into the presentation mode. Here's our trading boss manifesto. This will start to become, you'll see this on, uh, you'll be able to download it on trading like a boss. Um, who's in here? Lee. Lee, I want to make sure we get trade uh, the trading manifesto, and I want to make sure that we get our um, whatever the company goals and you know all of those things are. I want to get them into a PDF. So let's send an email to Sean that I want to combine all the stuff together, put it on trading like a boss as a download. Guys, this is something that I read every day, right? Every single day I read this thing and I read it out loud. So if there's I hear it, I speak it, I see it. There's multiple senses. I'm half Italian. Um, according to 23andMe, I'm 0.68% Italian um, and 0% French Canadian, which is what my dad said we were as French Canadian. So I have absolutely no idea who's right or wrong. But I digress. Uh, so being part Italian, I talk with my hands too. So there's another sense. Yes, it is a sense. If you don't think it's a sense, trust me, with an Italian grandmother who's slapping you in the face anytime you did something wrong, you feel it. You sense that that's coming, right? You know it. It's a sense, period. Uh Oh, for Sean's class? Okay, good. You got it, Erica. Excellent. Excellent. Good. Good. Right? Vegas Red Mastery. That's what uh, Erica was asking about. So make sure you register for that. Uh, I don't want to go there just yet. Not to the stock, top stocks picks in there. What trades did you guys do today? Drop those puppies in. I want to see what you did. Drop in the stocks that you did today. Uh, and let's go ahead and check it out. Right? Uh, I am just loving the market and what we're seeing. And I want to talk SPX in just a little bit. Who's down 67 points today? Home Depot, crushing blow. Walmart, crushing blow. Yeah, they, they went back up and filled their gap. But man, they got slapped right on the open today, right? Home Depot, right? Got slapped right on the open today, right? If, uh, actually, you know what? I need to put, I need to turn on real time training here in Omega Charts. Um, spy $230 for Erica. Kaching, great job, Erica. Uh, Jim said, uh, SPX, uh, W.X, which is the weeklies, uh, six and a half percent. Um, okay, so 0 0.064 percent, 0 0.052, 0 0.20, which is 20 percent. So six percent, five percent, 20 percent, 15 percent, currently up 90 percent in live trade. Nice. Great job. ES, which is the futures, the H23, uh, which is HMUZ, right? HMUZ are the four contracts. Uh, up $550, traded the ES yesterday before it closed at 1 p.m., made $150. Yeah. Uh, Donald said SPY and Q's up on both. 
Great. Great job. Those of you that are here, drop them in, folks. This is an accountability factor. That's what this is here, right? I'm not calling you out and say, oh, my God, how'd you have that go against you? Drop them in, right? Uh, the whole idea behind this is sharing. You're putting yourself out there. You're participating. That's what this is all about. All right. So great job, everyone. Erica. You guys can give kudos to everybody that did chime in. I appreciate very much that you did. Very, very, very much. All right. So if we look at the depot uh, for the intraday, right? So we had that gap down. We had that gap down today and it broke that 303.29 level, right? 303.29. Let's see what she did at the 303.29. So let's change this to 303.29. Okay. Beautiful. So we gap down on Home Depot on the open. All right. We climbed up. You can see we had a longer wick that ran into that 30807. And it moved up just a little bit on the open, slight gap up, and a nice fail. What did it do? It retested and closed at the 30329 uh, level. And then it failed on the next candles. There's 300, which is the target for the out. And we were out of this about $300.50, I think 75 cents, somewhere around there is where I finally pulled the trigger on it, where the stock was. But guys, you're talking about a $3 move on the stock. Um, so we'll call it a $2 move at a 75 delta. So you're talking about a buck and a half uh, on the move there. Great setup. Credit spread did well on it as well. I called that one out this morning if you were not in market mornings or when I say we're not in. You don't have to be in. There is no more live for it. There is... Right here on Trading Like a Boss, Market Mornings with Robert Roy. Register for that email list. It is a separate email that we send out every day that says, uh, this list is ready, right? Th this video is uploaded. It usually happens 8.45 to 9 o'clock. Somewhere in there, we send that email out. So you're not going back to YouTube and checking, forgetting about it. You ran away with it and so forth, right? Uh, let's see. Rose said, SPY, bought to open the 300 put, sold to open the put uh, in the AM and, and up. Great job. Uh, yeah, Paul, the 75 Delta was on a, did I say call? It's a put. Yep, it was on a put. Erica said, oh, I missed the market mornings email today. Great job on Home Depot. Yeah, it, uh, I know it came out because I did see the email come through because I checked timing to make sure when it actually gets out there every day. Um, to make sure that we're not missing it and that the, my team is staying on top of this. This has to be a first thing in the morning. Sean in our office does a phenomenal job, folks. If any of you have, have met him, those who are in Mastermind and Inner Circle, most of you from there have met with Sean already or met Sean before. Uh, he is phenomenal at what he does, not only as a trader, but what he does for us as a company. Uh, the guy's amazing, right? Just amazing. So my video is done by eight o'clock. He starts at 8 a.m., that's his first function is to take that and put it on the page. And we have the same page that it goes on over and over again. We don't change it. Sean changes the video every day. That's it. He uploads it on YouTube, does whatever his YouTube stuff is to it, and gets it off to Lee, who's in here with us today. Lee then sends out an email to everybody that says, here you go, folks. Uh, Market Mornings is posted. Right? And you can go and look. Just look at YouTube for it or just keep going back to the page for it. But the email is a good reminder of it. Right? Yeah, so Paul, the, the 75 Delta was on the buying. The credit spread today, where did I put it? The credit spread today on Home Depot was bear call spread above 310. That's what we're looking at today on a credit spread. So my call on it was a bear call spread above 310 or a long option. I don't bother writing put call. It's just a long option, right? So, because I'm going to trade it, whatever the, the news drove it. The news drove, the earnings drove it down. I'm going to look to buy a put, right? Or do the, the 310, uh, 312 and a half, 310, 311, whatever is available. I just tend to, to try to stay away from $5 increments where possible. Yeah, so the expiration uh, was this Friday. Yep, 
So we're going to talk about, in a few minutes, we're going to talk about my top three stocks that I trade right now, that they are my favorites. They're the ones that I am very hyper-focused on right this second. Ones I look to trade, I get one off on almost every one of them every single day. Um, and I'm going to go through some of that. And when we do, I'll kind of share a little bit with you of what it is that I'm looking to do, the why I look to do it, and so forth, right? So let's see, what other questions did I miss? Um, whoop, let's see. So Bonnie, hey, Bonnie, good to see you again. Uh, let's see, 217.23 cash secured puts on Tesla, 185 strike, expiration 323. Uh, yeah, Sean, does, he's great. Yep, he is. Uh, let's see, any, uh, Paul said any expired from Home Depot, yep, this Friday, da, 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 da. Uh, Jim said, I know you don't keep the, th the 233 SMA on your charts, but you've got to go and look at this indicator uh, today in the SPX where it is now. So we can add it right in because I keep it there. It's on there. I just don't keep it active, right? Because of the way it scrunches the chart down. I'm just not a fan of that at all. So uh, let's see. This one is 200. This is my 233 right there. So you see the chart right now in the background there? You see what this is? I'm going to put the, well, you won't be able to tell. It, it actually won't help us any in there, right? Um, now nah, you still won't be able to tell. <laughs> Never mind. I was going to say, oh, let me draw a line. Ah, I already did it. Okay. So I've got a 233. Oh, it didn't actually scrunch the chart this time. That was weird. Okay. Well, good. So the 233 is right down here, guys. So we just violated on Home Depot. Uh, we violated big time. But Jim was looking at SPX, right? We are, huh. So the 233 is right at that 55 EMA. 233 is simple. Um, 55 is exponential, okay? So we're sitting right at that point. Uh, and Jim said, um, let's see, look at the indicator today on the SPX. Uh, we are there now. Uh, the SPY around 1020, 1050 AM. Today it had a hard time closing below the, the 382. Amazing how it did that uh, at that line. I had the line on my chart. And I watched for a reversal of the line. It did not happen. Right, a Fibonacci depth, death cross. There you go, Trip. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, you know, tonight, uh, tomorrow night's uh, topic in uh, Monster Market Movers. Tomorrow night's topic in Monster Market Movers is um, bum, 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 switchback trade. So I'm going through laying out the rules, finding examples of it, and all of that, right? And switchback trade, I kept asking market mornings, power hour. You guys come up with names. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Trip is the one that came up with switchback, right? Uh, I like it a lot. So Fibonacci death cross. Ha, I got to look at that one, Trip. I mean, straight mark that. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Um, but it's sitting right there, guys. We'll talk SPX in just a little bit, right? Uh, but uh, it, is, uh, it is definitely an interesting pattern of where we are right now. So we'll, but we'll talk SPX in just a moment, all right? So that was my biggest thing this morning was Home Depot. And um, uh, today, I didn't really do a whole lot with the move the market made. I didn't do a whole lot when it came to pivots. It was just too big of a move. Hello, I don't know you. Um, let me shut that off real quick. Because spam calls usually tend to come in multiples. And you know, I have T-Mobile, and they're usually pretty good. They they got an app that catches that stuff. Um, let's see. So just too big of a gap down. It worked out well. I mean, if you took the trade, you did well. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong day. My bad. I didn't even look at it to take it. So, all right, here we go. So the gap down, we we pushed back up. All right, we pushed back up. We failed, you know, so we pushed back down, retested, failed. So the opportunity was there, 298, 296, 96 half. She had about a buck and a half in there. So the opportunity was definitely there, but not really my, um, not really my favorite way of trading it is with that small of a potential move in there, all right? Um, just give me a taste of the Godfather. <laughs> you got a <it>, trip. <laughs> Lead the gun, take the cannoli, right? Uh, Paul said, uh, sorry for me, one more question. Absolutely. Entry was when it gapped uh, below the fib line and retested and failed and entered, correct? So, Paul, because I've got the fibs already set up on here, right? Uh, with all the fibs, and we've got intraday here. 
So what happened was we gapped, and let me grab a drawing tool. This is why I was opening this up before. So we gapped down to right here. We pressed further down below the 303.29, retested, and we failed off of there. 300 is support, so that would be our drop dead out. You know, if, unless you're putting a very tight trailing stop on there, that's our drop, drop dead out on the trade. So it broke, retested, failed. There's the entry right there to the downside. All right, hope that helps, Paul. Let me know yes or no. Not a problem. Listen, I want I want you guys to trade this. You know, I'm watching somebody, a video of somebody that someone in my mastermind group sent to me. And they're saying, watch this, the way this guy trades. And I'm watching what he's showing on there. And it's a beginner's options training that he's doing, you know, how to trade options. And it's not, this is what Delta is. It was definitely more advanced than he led it on to be. But he's using indicators and you know, it has to do this for four candles. And if it does, you need two more candles for that. And then just one more time for good measure. And like, by the time I remember all these steps, I mean, was it four and three and one? Or was it one and three and eight? Or was it seven, five and four? You know, by the time I did all these steps, madre mia, forget it. I can't. There's no way. My system is very simple. We gap down below a fib line. We never retested that fib line today. So that fib line is invalid for me today as a trader. So what am I looking for? Do I bounce off the next fib line and take a bullish entry? Could be. Do I break that fib line, retest and fail? Could. But it's all the same thing. Wherever it moves to, get below a fib line if it's going down, retest it and drop. That's it. It's not hard. My targets are accurate. My, my exits are, are, are standard. I don't change that system. It works. We have tested this over and over. This started with Inner Circle, right? Which is our highest level coaching program. And inside of Inner Circle, we laid out the entire strategy on what we do in power option plays and for rules and so forth. And there are some rules that even in power option plays that we don't, they're a little more advanced and we don't use them in there, but they are the rules that we learned or discovered through inner circle, doing some back testing, some ideas and, you know, where we set our targets, our stops, what we like better with where the moving average is in relation to the fib line. A lot of it's already been uh, set up permanently now in pop, but there are some things still that are a little more advanced. Pop has to remain a training that yes, you could be an advanced trader and still live there, but it has to be a training that I could take a newer trader and teach it to them as well. That's what things like mastermind and inner circle come in. You want to propel yourself to that next level. That's what those trainings are for. It's exactly what they're for. Is that. Um, let's see. So you enter, Paul, you enter when it broke, it closed near it and it failed. So if we go back intraday to Home Depot, right, it broke below on, let me get a drawing tool. It broke and closed below that fib line right here. It closed right at that fib line there. The next candle moved down. That candle right there, that's our big E, E for entry. That's the entry. My target is right there, just above that 300 level. My stop is just above that fib line. It is that simple. That complicated and that simple all at the same time, right? Break, retest, fail. On the fail, Paul, is where you take the entry, right? And some of you know, some of you know that I have available and you'll find it. We don't really talk about it. Uh, I have one full day of training available with myself. We also do it with Brandon. Uh, if you have another coach that you want to do it with, you let me know. We can do that as well. Um, but one full day where you're either A, flying to New York, to be with me, Brandon, whomever it is, you would fly to New York, or B, we do it online over a two-day period instead of one. Eight hours on a, a computer uh, is a long day, right? So we do it live one full day or uh, on, uh, online um, for two half days uh, where I will work with you and train you on whatever it is that you're looking for, right? So if you have an interest in something like that, send an email to support. Drop the support email in there if you would, please, Lee. Uh, just click on the, the email address that Lee drops in there. Uh, if you have an interest, one of my team will reach back out to you and talk to you. Now, listen, if you really want to talk about 
what's an option? How does it work? You're wasting your money. That's not what that is for. Uh, listen, it, it, not only isn't it what it's for, I won't do it, right? It, it is not fair um, for, for us to spend our time on that. Not fair to us as a company. I don't really want to teach the very basic, this is what an option is to somebody for that kind of money. Uh, and it's not fair to you because you could be getting a lot better use of that um, with something else. So, uh, but if you have an interest in it, go ahead and just send an email and support and we can do that. All right. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So let's go take a look at the S&P 500 and see what the heck is going on. I want to start off with the intraday specs, SPX. Let's go do that. We're going to look at the five minute day. Um, it's been nice. Good gap down. We had PMI come out today, and I forgot what the other report was that came out. Nine nine forty five was PMI. Ten o'clock was a uh, I forget it was yellow. Uh, was another one that we looked at from this morning in market mornings. Uh, but we have just so here is our nine forty five. So we kind of we got down and went sideways through that nine forty five candle. The announcement came out, and we just pressed down. We were already in a downward pattern there, and now we just continue to drop this very ugly, right? It's almost 70 points to the downside right now. Existing home sales. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Uh, I don't know who the analyst was that was talking on there today of uh, the fallacy of people thinking that this is a, a place that we're in a bull market and this is a place to buy. You are, you know, the numbers don't show it. The earnings don't show it. The multiples don't show it. Yet people are crazed with this, that it hasn't caught up into the, the stock market yet. When it does, the expectation is a hard hit, right? And, and I'm not talking the hard hit, but I don't think we're in a true bullish market yet. We have some bullishness in an overall bearish market, but not a, a bull market at all, right? Um, Bonnie, just so you know, I don't really check Q&A, um, so try to use the chat. Um, I use TradeStation. Um, th that's what this is. This is TradeStation. Omega Charts is uh, a platform that we use as well. It's one that I have used now for over 20 years, and I will never stop using it. But uh, and because it has features in it that TradeStation just can't do. Um, yes, it is, Bonnie. It is a similar program to what we had way back then. Uh, we what we've done on Omega Charts, guys, and this is where, especially for someone that's a newer trader, this is where it is. So so phenomenal um, for you guys. So you go all the way down to the list and you've got a bunch of WBHQ stuff in there, right? So here we go, a lot of them, right? There we go. So three outside down, three outside up, candle patterns, bearish ADX, um, big stocks, bearish ADX, small stocks, a bearish band pinch, so Bollinger Band pinch, um, bearish big um, dollars and momentum, Bearish crossovers, bearish gap options with options, bearish gaps without options. OBOS is not an indicator that's in the set. Uh, but then you've got things in here such as, you know, covered calls, naked puts. Uh, there's a, a bullish spreads. There's a bearish spreads. So what we've done is we've built all of these indicators as part of the program. If you have an older version of a chart that looks like Omega charts, there is a very small fee to upgrade to get you all of this in there, along with, I think it's about $600 worth of other indicators that have been built out on top of this. It's called Omega Charts Pro. Um, just send an email to support and then we'll get you set up with that. Someone's got to look at it. So Bonnie, we can get Amelia to, to give you a call uh, if you have an interest in it, but um, you're welcome. All right. Um, yeah, so that's how the scans come in, Bonnie. Like I said, it's very small fee um, to, to upgrade to the software. And it's yours for life. It's not like a one-year type thing. It's, it's yours. All right, so let's go back to SPX. All right, here's what we have to really dig into right now. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the 233 um, just for the purposes of what I'm going to do for now. All right, so still that overall bearish pattern right? To the downside, bigger picture. Oops, what happened there? Come on, baby. Okay. That overall bearish pattern there that we violated broke out of to the upside, right? Um, for the, the last time we did it, oops, let's get a crosshair. Last time we did it was, uh, so I guess the breakout really came in about Jan 11, 
right? We broke out, we fell through one more time, and we've done well ever since. Putting in a higher high than we had here, and putting in a higher low than we had here. Higher high, higher low. Higher high, higher low. And then something happened. We closed on this low, that doji type candle right at support, right at the eight moving average. We closed right there. And then what? We bounced, strong candle pushed up and we put in for the first time since Jan 11, we put in a lower high. And then we came down to a low. Can't really compare it to, yes, it's a higher low, but that's not, we're not in the same bullish pattern anymore at this point. You can't measure this low to this low. That's not what we're trying to accomplish because we have that new lower high. We're looking for a lower low. We had a low here. We have a lower low here. We move back up and yet again, we put in another lower low. So we had one, I don't want to do that because I don't want it to be there. Let's see. So we had a high, right? At, well, I'm not going to do it. It's right at that fib line, right? Then we had another swing high right in there. We put in another swing high or another lower swing high right there, right? When it came to the swing lows, we had a low. We had a low. And we don't have another swing low yet. We're lower, but we don't have a swing low yet. But this is lower than the previous one. Actually, yesterday... If we just focus on yesterday, we had a lower low, right? So we put in new lower lows. So what's happening is you can almost draw that trend line to the downside, right? Off of those, you know, off of that pattern. Okay, just want to take all that back off. All right, so now what? Then what the heck is going on? What I said over the weekend was we have got to watch this candle on Friday. We closed in a bullish neutral territory. That was our bias, bullish neutral. But not only was the close tiny, we, the bulls fought their way back, but barely got above that 21 moving average. The problem was we had chipped away at the ice. We broke away that moving average line and we opened the door to say, go ahead, it's time to come in. No, no, come on. No, no, really, I'm, I'm inviting you. Please come in, right? We already broke through, right? chipped it a little bit that it had an opening in it. And today, huge gap through there. So what I said was, if we break the 21, that is where we start to get in trouble. We now, if we close where we are, we are now in a neutral bias. If we continue to press down and close below the 55, that puts us in a bearish bias, right? What you need to understand, let me, uh, let me see, where is it? Let me open up a Power Option Plays document here. I'm not sure where it's going to open, what screen she'll be on. So you go back and you look on the update that was for February 8th. So not very long ago, we had 20 bullish candidates, either bullish or bullish neutral, no neutral, and one that was bearish. Look at this column right here, column C. It's all right there, Okay. Then the next week, we went from 20 to 10. We had nine neutrals. So I can see a shift in direction. So then we had 13 and six. We took a little bit of a bounce in there. And then over this weekend, we went to 12 and four. So when we started off at 20 bullish, we now have 12 bullish, four neutral, and five bearish. Very much a mixed bag of what's going on there. Very, very much a mixed bag. Okay. Uh, and that's our number, 241.773 is how much we're up this year on power option plays, okay? Um, so, so right now, when we look at the, the, the S&P where it is today, okay, that break to the downside is going to have a massive impact on where stocks are for the day. You know, if we just, and this is my power option plays right here. If we scroll through and, you know, I've got to give it a couple of seconds to update if I haven't been there already, right? So this one is Apple moved down, still in a bullish neutral bias, right? We are now bearish where we went from neutral um, on Adobe, right? We were in a bearish bias already on Amazon. Booking, uh, we were bullish, we're now bullish neutral. And this is assuming they stay there. We were bullish neutral, now neutral on Chipotle. Costco. We're now in a neutral bias. We were bullish. 
right? We were bearish there already. Goldman Sachs, we're, same thing. Nothing's changed there. Home Depot has definitely gone to bearish, right? Actually, they were bearish. They were bearish. Uh, MasterCard has now moved into bearish territory. Meta, let's see where the candle is. Still in the same thing. Netflix, woo, I love me some Netflix. All right, uh, still in neutral. NVIDIA, uh, still in bullish neutral. Still bearish on PayPal. Roku, still bullish. Uh, let's see, on SPY, we were bullish neutral. Now we are neutral. Square, we were uh, we were neutral, now we're bearish. Tesla, we were bullish on Tesla. We're still, but barely bullish. United Healthcare, we were bullish. Uh, actually, we were neutral, we're still neutral. And then W Day, right? We were bullish neutral on W Day, and now we're in a neutral bias. So you can see there's a massive shift going on in bias right now. I'm not saying sell all your stocks. The market's going to go to a pot. You need to start picking pennies up off the floor when you walk down the street just to get your hands on some cash. That's not what I'm talking about, okay? But I do, I do not believe we're in a true bullish market at this point, regardless of what the chart shows. I don't see it in the numbers that are out there. I don't see it. You know, I never consider myself to be an intelligent man. I think I've got street smarts. I could shake your hand and know exactly who you are in, in 30 seconds just with a, a quick conversation, whether I trust you, like you, and so forth, right? I'm real good with that. When it comes to book smarts and brain smarts, I mean, the charts, this is 25 years plus of me looking at charts of what I'm coming up with to, to give you my reasoning. But I have someone that's in my mastermind that is probably one of the most brilliant men that I've ever met, right? He's an economist, at least that, to us, that's who he is, the economist. And he's the one that goes through, oh, this is what the dollar is doing and the bond is doing, and this is what this is doing. I don't get all that stuff, nor do I need to. If I can read the chart, I can trade. That's all I care about, right? But I listen to people that are smarter than I am. No different in my business. People like Sean and Suzanne and Amelia, much smarter than I am. Much smarter than I am, right? Lee and much smarter than I am, okay? For me, I know the stock part. I know the chart part. And why? Because I am repetitive. If I've got to have 95 different if it does this, then I'll do that type scenarios. I'll never trade it. But if I could find a breakthrough support, retest and fail, that I could do. It's the same thing over, what if it goes up? Breakthrough resistance, retest and bounce. Just turn the frown upside down, turn that pattern upside down, and we're now able to trade it, right? Oh, what did I say about Roku? Let's go back and look, Erica. I don't remember. Uh, so they're still in a bullish bias. They moved down nicely. Their earnings were phenomenal. Right? They had a great move up on their earnings, right? Their earnings are phenomenal. I need them to come back anyway. They're kind of out there right now with how big of a move they had. They're too far away. I need them to kind of settle back in where they were, and that gives me the best opportunity to be right in that trade. Jim said, good analysis on the stocks you track. Uh, I appreciate that. You're welcome. KISS method, keep, a, keep it simple, silly. Right, Jim? That's what that stands for. Keep it simple, silly. Right? Or any other word you want to put in there that starts with an S, right? <laughs> and mixed company will say silly, but I hear you, Jim. I do. I do. Oh, my goodness gracious. Yeah, sweetie, there you go, Bonnie. Sometimes I don't want to call my stock sweetie. I'm kind of ticked off at them sometimes, but Roku is one of my favorite stocks to trade. Thank you. No, no, listen, Eric, I love Roku. When they move 10% on a, a stock that's $50, $60, $40, uh, phenomenal. We kept them on power option plays because of how much they were moving. They had $50. They're moving $6 a day. I mean, it was insane. Insane the move that they took. So I like them a lot. All right. So let me switch over here. Let me go back here. My top three stocks to trade. Okay. One, two, three. No particular order right? Netflix, NFLX, right? Write them down for now. We're going to talk about them. NVIDIA, NVDA, and Tesla, T-S-L-A, right? Why are they my favorite stocks to trade? Netflix. And I know some of you are going to freak out. You're going to look at the options price and go, you're crazy. I can't trade that. It's too expensive. It's this, it's that. Let's, let's take it one step at a time. Okay, so if we go to Netflix, 
Got it. Let's bring the option chain over. Come on. Move. <laughs> fighting with me. Damn, fighting words. Okay. So if we look at Netflix right now, bearish market moving to the downside, right? It's down $8 on the day. And I'm not saying it's a good one to trade today or, or even right this second. I'm just saying these are the top three that I look at as my favorites day in and day out. Okay. If I look right now on an option on um, Netflix, okay, we find, I'm looking for, real simple, write them down if you don't know it, 65 to 85 delta, but here's the most important part of that phrase. Yes, 65 to 85 delta is what I need, but closest to the 65. In other words, if there's a 65 and an 85, there's no way I'm trading that 85 if it meets the other rules. I'm going to trade the lowest delta I can in that range because of cost and where it falls on the bell curve. Uh, a 65 falls much lower on the bell curve on the sweet spot. So if this is the bell curve. Uh, maybe you can't see too well there. I know I can't. Let me bring back the PowerPoint. Okay. So if this is my bell curve and don't laugh at how I draw, okay? If this is my bell curve, that 65 delta is right here. That is a massive sweet spot where the 85 delta is here. Okay? I have a much better opportunity on that 65 delta because when there's a small movement in the stock price, there is a magnified movement in the options price. That is because of what delta does. Delta gamma, there's some combination there, but delta is, is the base of where it all starts. Okay? If you get in at 85, which you easily can, I'm not saying you can. Your move up is much smaller because you're only going to 100 or one delta. All right. Then every dollar the stock moves, the option moves a dollar, and you kind of lose your uh, advantage there with that. But on this option, 65 delta, we just had uh, this is interesting 62, 69. So we've got a 69 delta right now is trading at 970. We're going to look at the mid price at $9.70. One contract, $970. Now, some of you go, <laughs> 970 on one trade are you crazy others are going yeah okay but can i do more like 20 contracts and 50 con yeah see the, the the nice thing is you can get away with one contract on any of these setups obviously the more you put in the more you make but the more you put in the more you risk as well so it's not you make it's the more you put in the more you can make the more you put in the more you do risk right but nine dollars and 90 cents we'll call it 10 bucks on friday at 9.30, at actually 9.45 a.m. on Friday, uh, Tesla, uh, not Tesla, Netflix, Netflix had a price of $5.12. So what happens is as you get closer to the end of the week, the value of the options drop. Time value goes away. So you could have done this trade not for $1,000, but for $500. So somewhere between $500 and $1,000 to do a trade on Netflix per contract, right? That is why I like a Netflix. Not to mention, it's intraday movement. Come on. Oh, there we go. We had Netflix already there. All right. So Netflix moves uh, 23, 11, 11 and a half dollars a day. 11 and a half dollars a day right? Loving me some Netflix, right? From Netflix, NVIDIA is my next one. Bonnie, so would you consider a spread on Netflix all the time, Bonnie? Yes. All right. So on NVIDIA, they move about $10, 10 and a quarter a day, right? On NVIDIA. If we look right now at NVIDIA, All right, let's go over to NVIDIA. NVIDIA right now, bearish pattern, right? Let's see, they're down uh, about four and a half dollars right now, 210. If we look right now, let's go find that 65 Delta. So 68 Delta is trading at 1450. 1450. Um, let's just see. Something. Right? But look what's happening here, folks. You see this E? 
Manana is earnings date. All right. They have earnings coming out tomorrow. They are going to have jacked up premiums right now. Right. But using, a, a, you know, apples to apples right now, $14.50, 1448 is mid price. On Friday, 9.45 a.m. Eastern time, NVIDIA was $5.87 on Friday. So for not much more than Netflix, you can trade in NVIDIA. Goldman Sachs just came out and announced NVIDIA is one of the top three companies to um, capitalize on AI in the upcoming future, right? I love NVIDIA, right? I think they've got a lot going on for them as a company. Right. And I can get away with not very expensive trades. I'm not talking, listen, I'm not talking dirt cheap. Right. Tesla is the next one. Right. If we go and look here at Tesla, okay. Tesla moves about uh, just shy of 12, of $13 a day. Just shy. No. Um, 23, just shy of $12 a day, 11 and jingle a day, okay, is what they tend to move. We look at the options on Tesla right now, moving in a bearish pattern, right? So let's just look at the puts right now and look at volume today, massive volume today on the puts and the calls, actually. But let's find that 65 delta. Here's a 68 delta on Tesla. We're looking at 11.15. On Friday, they were $6.15. Friday at 9.45 in the morning. Four full days later, four days of time have gone away. That's where we're sitting at. And those are the highest price positions or some of the highest price positions that I trade. Now, I love booking. Booking has probably given us seventy or $80,000 of profit this year on our booking setups, right? And of course, everything we talk about is for education purposes. Chipotle has done amazing for us as well. They're the highest price stocks that we have in power option place. Then there are some ones like Costco in there, which are that $500 stock. A lot of them become that $200 to $500 stock. We've got quite a few in there. But ironically, we have a lot in there that are much lower priced as well. Companies like a Roku, which I love to trade. And when I trade Roku, for me, it's 20 contracts. Right? If we look here at Roku, Right, we're down five and a half dollars today, right? What are we looking at? 65 Delta, $3.28. I don't have the Friday number for it, but $3. And this is actual numbers, folks. This is from Friday, 9.42 a.m. is when I took the reading. That was the mid price. Right now, we can get into this trade with a 60, well, 71 Delta now, but it was just 65. So we can get in there at three and a quarter. Right now, $3.25, we could buy a put on Roku. Right, which means $325. Now, can you find ones that are less expensive than that? Probably. But Roku, to me, not part of my top three, right? But it's one that I definitely like to trade. They move $4.60 a day. $4.60 a day. As a $70, now $66 stock. They move seven, seven bucks a day. Uh, four and a half dollars, four sixty a day. All right. So great moves on a Roku. Right. I like them a lot. Um. Let's see. Uh, I didn't. I didn't. Sixty five. No. Okay. Sixty five percent is close to the six one eight. Yeah. Well, there you go, Trip. And, and now you're talking a little more advanced in there. Um, a spread on Netflix, yes. Jim said Tesla, uh, call 210 for 24th Feb volume, 108,086. Yeah, uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of volume on them. They're big, big traders on Tesla. Ed said, what class do you teach this for? Do I teach what for, Ed? You talking about um, with these three stocks? Power option plays. It's all power option plays. Guys, you know, listen. Uh, power option plays is not the reason that we talk about or we're talking about these three stocks today. Um, here, we took one of our biggest hits this entire year the other day 
Uh, this was on the 16th. So Thursday on Chipotle, we, we got a, a $4,056 hit, right? In there. But if we go and look, we're up $241,773, right? Now, I did not transfer these over yet. I have to do that a little, little while. I didn't transfer them to this sheet yet. But for the month of January, you see Jan trades right here. That, that's all of these are Jan, right? Everything to where this green box goes is January. So we've got 63 line items. The first three are headers uh, plus one more. So, six, so uh, 59 trades taken in January. Everyone there, nothing here. Actually, it'd be easier to see it here. So here's Jan's numbers, right? 59 trades, 46 winners, nine losers, four break even. 78% win rate, 15% lose rate, 6.78% uh, break even, right? Uh, number of 20 contract trades, number of 10 contract trades, and number of four contract trades. 20 contracts is newer. Since we had so many stocks break 100, we had to do something. Uh, okay, Brenda, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so in, and Lee dropped a link in there, folks. Listen, the quarterly subscription is a two-week trial. You will not be a guru in two weeks. I'm sorry. This will take a little more time than that. But the, the idea behind this is by following along with what I've done here, you have, in my opinion, one of the best opportunities of being successful in the market is utilizing these strategies. We have consistently year over year in our uh, non-funded accounts. It's all examples, right? But I call all these trades out. It's not like I, I come back and make these up. This is what we're doing. Here's the rules. Day trade, swing trade, earn. Here's the rules. Here's the lines, the levels I call out. Here's our targets, our stop. I give you two supports, two resistances. If you look here on Apple, okay? The, wherever it was, I said the bearish targets, 147, 142. Bullish was 156, 161. That's it. You know where you're getting out of that trade and how do you get in? It broke above, it bounced, uh, broke, ab broke above, Pull back and bounce. The bounce, you're in the trade. Where do you set your, your targets? We have stops and targets are defined. They're not hard. It is one rule for any of these trades. It's the exact same rule. The exact same rule for setting your targets and your stops, right? Take advantage of two-week trial of it. And actually, uh, Lee, when is, when is mastering the trade? Is it the first? Mastering the trade is the first. Hmm. So next week is a bonus live training that I do once every four to six weeks uh, at night. We're going to do this. We go two hours in that training. And inside of there is where I answer all your questions. I introduce anything that's new to Power Option Plays. That's where we teach it. If we have to change a candidate, we go through the process of how we find and pick a new candidate. Uh, I never do that on my own. I always do that as a group exercise. Uh, so your two weeks trial to your quarterly subscription would include mastering the trade. Right, so you get to come into another two-hour training as well. So well worth it there. Uh, I did, Brenda. I already talked about the three. It's Tesla, Netflix, and Nvidia. Go back and watch the the, the recording on it, uh, and you can see you know a little more about them. All right, I've got six minutes left until uh, we've got to finish up here because I've got another meeting to get to. So drop in the candidate you want me to look at. Yep. So. Trip uh, dropped in the trio. If you have time, AMD for a switchback. Hopefully, as good as this morning. IBM still looks at it. Okay, let's go look at them, Trip. Uh, AMD was the first one. Okay. Come on, baby, like my fire. Okay. So, uh, AMD for a switchback. What well, was a great switchback setup this morning? And that's part of uh, tomorrow night's topic trip is switchback trade. Tomorrow night in Monster Market Moves. And we're going to go into a little more in-depth of rules of why and the where. And yes, it's a switchback. But should you have a bias going into that switchback, the answer is absolutely. When you do have a bias, what are the considerations to look at? We're going to go into that. Things like where are moving averages and, and something like that. So with where we were sitting yesterday, Friday's close, Great move to the downside. The upside was kind of hard because of the 21 average sitting right there, right? So that one makes it a little bit uh, tougher for me. Uh, then you had IBM, I think, was next. IBM. And you wrote, uh, still looks dead. Okay. Uh, come on. S. 
IBM. So I liked where it was yesterday. We were in a bearish bias. I love today. Here, watch. Paul, you paying attention? Paul, let me know if you're still here. 134.36. Just give me a yes or a one or... All right, I saw a message come in there. Here, okay, good. So watch. See what IBM did today? It gapped down. You see that little wick up in there? Not hiccup, wick up when we move back up, right? Watch, 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 watch. All right, this is IBM. This is how complicated the setup is. We gap down. Here's the support level, 133.20, uh, uh, 134.36, I think is what I said, right? Hold on, that, that line is in the wrong place. 134.36, okay, so let's change that line to 134.36. One thirty four point thirty six. All right, so we got the gap down, Paul, and everybody, right? We got the gap down today. It gapped too far down. It stretched up and failed. Okay, so on a if you're focused just on a five minute candle here, you look at this and say we never retested. We gapped and we failed. Now, if I convert this over to a one minute chart. And I'm going to go back into the start of the day today. All right. Now, on the start of the day, what happened? We gapped down. We closed here. Right. We started to fail. Okay. We started to fail. So we're looking for, for me, the entry would come down about a dollar off of that level. So 134 and a quarter. So probably about 133 and a half is where I would be into this trade. Right. So did we drop to 133 half in here? Uh, we did not. So that was not a candle to take the entry. This candle we retested. We retested the level. So on the first candle down, uh, on the gap down, I am in position number one in the chair. I am back here on the gap. On candle one, that first one minute candle, it closed to the upside, close to the level. I am here. I am now in position two in the chair. Right, we move back off on that next candle. So, right here, we move down, we, we pulled up, right? We start to back off, and I'm in position two of the chair again now. I'm not back in one, but we haven't really set up an entry yet. The next candle, we gap down a little bit and we move up off of there. We retest that level and we fail. Now, how much did we retest the level? Watch this. 133.46, our high was one, I mean, 134.36. Our high was 134.36. Exactly, exactly. So now I am in position number one in the chair. I'm on the edge of the chair, which is why I wind up changing chairs every year is I break them because of, I'm sitting on the very edge of this chair. There's maybe four inches behind me of chair. Everything else is hanging off the chair right now. Right. And I am ready now to place this trade. We start to fail. If we look at wherever 133 and uh, a half is, one thirty three and a half, uh, 34 and a half. Yeah, 133 and a half. That's where my entry would be when we got in there. So at this point, with the retest and the fail, that would be where my setup would be. When we get to that level, go ahead and buy the option, the put option that I want to trade, right? And that came in, if we go back to a five minute, remember those were ones, that came in, we were waiting for that push down, that came in this morning at 9.55 a.m., all right? As hard and as easy as that is, right? That is what every bit of this is about. Every single bit of it. Uh, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Thanks, appreciate the insight. You got it. You got it. Um, all right, guys. Sorry, we're, we're kind of out of time at this point. I got really hyper-focused today on not just the three candidates, but on the... Um, the access of how we go about trading those candidates. And it's not just those three. 
I trade the exact same way on all 20 stocks that I trade. I am not one that has all these different things that I do. I have different setups, but it's a different pattern at a different place or time or series on a chart. But for what I do, the majority of how I trade is what I've showed you right here is what we do in Power Option Place. So uh, everyone, hey, listen, have a great rest of your day. God bless. And uh, listen, Lee dropped a ton of links in there for you. Go ahead and click on those. Take me up on the two-week trial. You can come back in 13 days, 23 hours, and 59 minutes from now and say, forget it. I am not interested. We'll still be friends. You got to take advantage of two free weeks of Power Option Plays or whatever the training is. And on top of that, with Power Option Plays, you've got a free two-hour class coming up as well uh, that you'll have inside of that, uh, that training. All right? So uh, let's see. I see a lot of thank yous coming through there. You guys have a great day. Uh, and listen, we'll leave the room open. I'm going to bug out for now, but I will see you all in our next update. All right, take care, folks. See you soon.